YouTube. Brian Phillips. We have box. We're gonna open it right now before your very eyes. All new from Brian Phillips RC. Something you've never seen before. Nobody has seen it. Not even us. Whoa, it's a futuristic Blade Eclipse 360. It's got some wheels and it's got a body and it's got a tail and a helicopter thing. So we're gonna look at it right now. Without further ado, as you can see, it is a futuristic, cool looking helicopter. I have been talking to people about this thing for a while now. Are those retracts? Hold on a second. No, I think they come off. I think that's what it is. But as you can see, we have, it is a helicopter. It's uh, easy, easier to fly with optional use, safe technology and panic recovery. High power 3S compatible brushless outrunner motors. Uh, functional extras, LEDs and optional use wheels. Optional use wheels. Oh, there okay, you go. there you go. But yeah, it's got LEDs and stuff. So that's pretty sweet. Um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and, ooh, look, there's a picture of. It's Sean. It's Sean. Sean. Good to see you, Sean. Sean was uh, flying airplanes with Megan and I at the last RC Fest. So if you guys go to it RC Fest, fun. maybe we'll see you there if we're there. And if we're there, it will be amazing. So we will look forward to it. This is a pretty sweet shot of it. I like the marketing pictures for once. Mm -hmm. This is really pretty helicopter. It is a fictitious model, I believe, but it's model after a model that may be a real model someday, but we're yeah, not sure. I think so. so we'll see. This does have smart technology, so we should have uh, voltage telemetry and stuff like that, which is always handy. Okay, so here's the uh, setup. Uh-oh, I see an addendum. It's a model addendum. Oh, so you get to choose between the landing gear and skids. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, oh, so it looks like they must have added the, the landing. I thought there were retracts, maybe. I was like all excited. All right, so this is going to be. Oh, yeah, that's sweet. Okay. okay, let's see how this. Is. Hey, I'm trying to decide if I should take this whole thing out or just kind of leave it in the box. What do you think, camera crew? Wow. This unbox is gonna be like super quick. Okay, it's done. Yay. Wow, that is so sweet looking. It's weird because it's foam, guys. I know, it is weird. We don't see foam helicopters. Okay, look at the bottom with us quick. These are, these are the landing skids right here. One, two, three, four, five, six screws. And then it looks like it's got stick and boom adapters for landing gear. Obviously fly barless. So once you put those out, they'll stop falling like that but it's just a different looking thing. That is so cool, look at this. It's got this, oh wow, it's like a little EDF sort of thing. That is so cool and it's got LED on top. It's a, it's a little thick back here like you would see on some of the uh, Airbus, I think Airbus model has this thing. I don't know what the heck that's called. I feel like an idiot because I don't know what that's called except this, they cheated and they put a clear blade on there. Mm -hmm. This one actually has a little EDF, a little electric ducted fan. Oh, it's just a ducted fan, I think. Is that this all is just it is? a ducted fan, yeah, on the full scale. For whatever reason, Blade always gives us these goodies, which is kind of nice that we get them, but there again, this is a bind and fly, so we don't have to mess with that necessarily. And then here's the optional landing gear. I suppose we'll want to look at those, and then it's got, probably the weirdest blade holder I've ever seen because this is designed to work with the foam. Yeah. Now I'm not sure I'm like super excited about using that because here's the thing, by the time you put these blade stows on here, let's see if this works. By the time you do that, I'm just afraid you'll dent your foam. Ah, it does work, okay. And that is one thing that's really nice about helicopters compared to airplanes, folks. If you haven't done any of these modern helicopters, I just want to say, you can store a lot of helicopters in a small space, okay? Yes. And not true with airplanes. No. You can store a lot of airplanes in a huge space. And we do. <laughs> store more helicopters in the same huge space. Yes, exactly. A lot, lot more helicopters. Yeah. Okay, so let's look at the landing gear. 
Uh, we obviously are gonna do the unbox build radio setup. Let's see if they're soft. Eh, they're kind of softer than they could be. They're basically rock hard. 1.25 inches. Okay. They're kind of they're kind of cool looking. I mean, I like the way this looks without wheels, but I think I want to put wheels on it. Just, I mean, people are gonna want to see what it looks like. So why don't we go ahead and put the wheels on? Okay. Uh, it does come with some screws. These screws, of course, are gonna pass through and accomplish our mount. So if we look at the instructions, we can follow through that. Now, guys, just to be clear, that is everything except for, there's a piece of foam right there, but there's, there's nothing in it. Hmm. So I don't know, maybe there was something in that. It's, I'm not sure if this is like a PD one, PD sample. It, it might've been. We might've got a product development sample, guys. We use, sometimes on the early releases, we get those. It we never have, know. It did have a manual in it though, so. Right, yeah, but it looked like maybe Looked like maybe it had been opened up. It doesn't matter to us. We just want to make sure we have the same thing you guys get. I can't tell which way that goes. Oh yeah, it goes like this. Because if you may have noticed, oh, did the landing gear go back into the box? That's what I was just gonna ask. Cause that would be nice. I don't think there's gonna be room. We'll have to cut the box up. Well. Maybe this one will just stay out on display. Oh, good. Yes, exactly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the unbox build radio setup on this heli and give you guys a chance to see what it can do. Oh, and then also if you wanted to know the size, it is, let's show the people the drawing real quick because this will be helpful for oh, those yeah. of you. So it looks like the blades are 350 millimeters each. So it's a pretty good size plane, or helicopter rather. And so it's about 782 millimeters on the fuse. And sizing on helicopters I have found is like, it's, it's usually the size class, when I'm talking about helicopters, I'm talking about the blade size, okay? But everybody always talks about an individual blade when I talk to them. So I don't know, I don't know enough about helis to speak wisely on this. So correct me in the comments because I know you're gonna do it anyway. And let me know if that is correct. Because really, what it comes down to is there's two blades on a heli, okay? So like this one here we just did not too long ago, this little Infusion 120, okay? So that's pretty incredible. Super fun, indoor, direct drive motors. We had a really good time with this. I, I really like this thing. I crash into the concrete and all I had to do was glue together my landing gear. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was back up in the air, no problem. In fact, we took off right away after I broke them. And then of course, this is the uh, Fusion 360. Really liked the Fusion 360. Really liked my 330S, which would have been super similar to this. And really liked my 230S. And one of the reasons I love them is because if you get into different product offerings, and of course there's lots of other helicopters out there, you're gonna get into a much higher degree of difficulty on setup and flight characteristics. It's not that it's harder to fly, but it is definitely going to get more into the like 3D arena and high performance helicopters. So I'm like really excited to see something that is actually targeted at a scale performance sort of like cool looking heli. Now my understanding is this thing is still gonna do the 3D stuff, which we'll find out if it can do that after somebody that can fly those things flies one. <laughs> but in the meantime, you can watch me. Oh, I need screwdrivers. So screwdriver set. If you guys wanna support the channel, all you have to do is look no further than the description and you will see links to buy one of these beauties for yourself. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and look at the instructions. This obviously is the nose gear. Looks like 1.5 millimeter. Is that right? Kind of hard to know what size that is. Oh, wait. I like honestly can't tell. That's not even, there's nothing in there yet. Yeah, that's just, I'm sort of not sure what the heck to do with this. Is this just the nose gear? Yeah, that's the nose gear. Because the nose gear has like the, the front and back. Okay, so I already threw away my, my tool. 
Okay, there we go. So this is gonna pass through. Why did they have that thing in there? I, I don't, don't know. understand. Okay, so we're gonna try to see if this goes, it looks like it's gonna go this way. It's just like a really long screw is all. And it just threads through. Yeah, it's just biting in there, no problem at all. So once this gets screwed in, all right, yeah, pretty simple stuff. That's not spinning free, so I need to go back just a little bit. See, I don't want that to be bindy. So I'm kind of working it. See, it just squeezes the plastic together. Okay, so now that I've got this kind of relaxed a little bit, I see that my screw head, see it's just, it's got a little bit of a bite to it. So I think no matter how loose you put that, I'm gonna try to go until it's like got the head kind of compressed somewhat tight. See, I still want, I don't want this biting, but it's not gonna spin free, okay? Which is kind of weird, but whatever. Um, then I need a bigger, Two millimeter, let's see if two millimeters is big enough. Nope, it's two and a half, good lord, three. Oh wait, that's two, this is 1.5. They got put back in the wrong order. That's what's going on. This is the flat, that's what happened. Two and a half guys. Yeah, two and a half, okay. Two and a half is gonna slide through the actual landing gear wheel. There's left and right, see it says R, See the R, can you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the right one would go on the right side of the aircraft, so this landing gear would go out like that, I'm assuming. Is that right? Yeah, they go on the no. right side. Well, yeah, I mean, I agree, but like how the heck are you supposed to start it? Do you have to like tap it? You have to tap it. Are you serious? That can't be the way it's supposed to be. Yep, that's the way it is. You have to tap your own hole, guys. Okay, that's pretty weird. So it's like going into a plastic piece, okay? And then this will spin free. And I definitely want it to spin free. I'm just kind of nervous what's gonna happen is when you have three, okay, so I'm going until it's tight. You see it's protruding through. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm backing off. Ooh. Okay, now that I've backed it off, oh yeah, that'll spin free now. So before we get any further, I wanna just kind of hold this up and see what we got for hardware. I can actually lay this on its side, which is unusual for a helicopter. Um, so that's supposed to go on the outside. It's like outboard, it'll actually make it slightly wider stance. So for a guy like me, it'll actually help make it a little bit more stable. Okay, so I'm gonna undo these little landing strips, skids, and there are LEDs, sweet. Super excited to see this. I hope this thing flies good, cause it looks cool. And it makes me think about like, oh, what other aircraft could we do if we're doing all these like three-dimensional bodies like this. I'm super excited to see what comes next too. Okay, so that one's gonna go there. So I gotta build the other one first. I'm going back to the 2.5 millimeter. And what I was saying is you have to thread your own hole. You might find it even easier to just start it like this. I just can't believe there's not a nut zert in there or something, but it's just because it's a small piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start the hole get about four or five threads deep. Then I'm gonna throw the landing gear wheel on there like this. Okay, so now these are optional. You don't have to use these, but I'm gonna use them and I think it's gonna be cool. And if you guys wanna keep it a little bit shorter profile, then you can leave them off. And then you can also stick it back in the box, which might be helpful for you. But I mean, helicopters are not that hard to transport anyway. All right, so this one's gonna go right here. It says L, so it should match. Yep, it fits perfectly, okay? 
So now what I need to do is I need to take the screws out of this thingy. You do have to reuse those screws. And it looks like uh, 1.5 millimeters. We're gonna pass this all the way through the first one and just get that started. Now I must warn you, if you're unsure of yourself when you first get this model, um, if you don't wanna like break the landing gear, I don't know that you're gonna break the landing gear so much as if you wanna avoid the possibility of breaking the landing gear, maybe fly it with the skids first. So that's why I'm doing this first because I'm such an amazing expert heli pilot. <clears throat> that's a joke, people. I'm actually not a terrible heli pilot if you don't mind flying in safe and flying like with the tail boom pointed at you all the time because that's like the kind of pilot I am for heli world. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna undo these rest of these screws and uh, why don't we just do them all? We'll just do them all. What the heck was that? The wind? No, it wasn't. It was a cat. It was like 100% a cat. It was the wind. That was not the wind. There was a cat hissing. Where's the cat that hissed? No, the cats are all outside. No, they're not. In the garage. There's a cat in our master bathroom. I know it for a fact. It was the wind. It was the way the screens rattle when, when the wind gusts like that. Yeah. That is so weird. I'm glad I haven't ever been here alone when that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've been calling for an exorcism. Like, that was weird. I'm here all the time. When Are you windy. sure that wasn't a I'm cat? sure that was the wind. Seriously? Seriously. Oh, my goodness. Wow. We can replace the screens. We've had crazy. It's been insanely, insanely windy. Insanely windy. It's been terrible. Which is why we're building this at night, because we want to have this ready for when Mother Nature decides to give us a decent opportunity yeah. to fly. It's so been kind of bad. Maybe you'll see it sometime this year. Yeah, maybe. All right, so the way you can differentiate between the nose gear skid and the back skids is that these ones are rounded like that, okay? And since this isn't modeled after a technically like full scale helicopter, it's a futuristic helicopter. Um, <clears throat> I can't say, you know, oh, look, look right there on the ground. I know, the wind woke her up. No. That's What's Callie, that? and there is another cat here. She probably got scared and woke up. There's yeah. no way that's the wind. That was her. It was the wind. That is so nutty. Oh, crap. You have to put this on first. You have to put this on first, guys. Oh. Dang it, I wish they would have shown that in the drawing. They show this going on first. Yeah, they show it with the wheel on already. Okay, since we have to undo this, we'll pause and come back. Okay, so I'm sliding this in now that I have that nose gear mount separate. And so folks, we do the build on these aircraft with the understanding that, you know, like this isn't really hard, uh, but we want you to be aware of kind of the different pitfalls we run into and that would be putting this on. And actually the last few airplanes we've built have been relatively easy builds, but we've just run into like stupid difficulties. You remember? Mm -hmm. I do. And stupid difficulties are frustrating, but at the end of the day, it's not really that big a deal. This is not like a hard thing to do, by the way. It's extremely easy for a helicopter. All right, so then this, slide that in, drop that back in, it pins in place, and then we can get this on. So now this is not actuated at all. It's not like it's got a steerable servo or retracts or anything like that. Um, but it does look kind of sweet actually, I think. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So like you guys might not like that and that's okay. You know, if you're not into the uh, futuristic look or you don't like the way that this futuristic heli looks, that's fine too. We don't mean to try to pretend like everybody's gonna love this thing and fall into love with it. But I definitely think it's cool myself and I'm excited to see how it flies. My guess is it's gonna fly very good because this is a blade heli and Whatever heli aficionados out there, heli schnobs, want to leave comments about that down in the video description below. Feel free, have at it. I'm sure you'll have plenty of select words. But I'm going to tell you this. If you're a newer pilot and you fly airplanes and you want to cross over into helicopters, I'm going to tell you, the blade stuff is 
in my opinion, some of the easiest stuff to learn to fly on, okay? Now, I know there may be some more sophisticated, high-end flight controllers and stuff like that. And normally when we talk about Spectrum stuff, we're not talking about like the cheapest. Um, but in our case, I know when you get into the heli realm, even a couple hundred bucks for a flight controller, receiver combo is cheap. So, which is crazy, but it's true. Um, you, can, you can spend double that without even thinking on flight controllers for helicopters. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna put this sideways like that. Then I'll show you how the canopy opens. Okay, so it's magnetically attached. Whoa, that's like totally different than what we're used to. So it's got these two clip doohickeys here and then a magnet here. So like if you were to stick this down there, that would probably not be a good idea for flying. Probably not. That way. And then you can see how this goes. There's the receiver. Um, that's actually one of those Spectrum serial receivers, which is pretty sweet. So that must go back to, yep. It's got the same one we always put in. It's got the 5250HX controller, which is what we've done in recent installs. I'm just moving all the collectives. Whoa, that's weird. Look at this. Yeah. They, they evidently couldn't fit the servo there, so they did the servo up front. I don't know if that's for serviceability, but it's an H3 uh, 3050 Heli Cyclic. So that's a cyclic control, cyclic control. Yeah, so I'm just moving the controls. That is really cool. And then here's the brushless motor. So it, it does have a gear, so it's not direct drive. Um, it's a 3018-2800KV-8P, which I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure if somebody is breaking in downstairs or if that's a cat attacking something. This kid's playing with peoples. Oh, is that what that is? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have some high quality blade straps, uh, which, which is nice, okay? And then there is a very substantial room for battery. Um, but again, it's unusual that we have this canopy designed in such a way. So it's something that I haven't seen before. I know some of you guys that are heli aficionados will have a really good understanding about, but let's figure out what type of battery we need in this thing. I don't see the battery yet. Have you? Oh, 3S, uh, 2200 through 3200. 30C or higher. Okay, so it looks like we need a 2200 3S is what I'm gonna go with. So we already have a 2200 3S right here. So if you guys don't have the charger, you can use an S2200, which is a great way to do this. Or if you don't have the budget for that and you just want a single channel, the S155 will do pretty much all the stuff you do. It's just gonna do it at 55 watts for one channel as opposed to 200 watts for one channel times two. Okay, so that's where you get the two 2200. So we'll plug that in, let it charge. If it's not charged, this is a smart battery, so it will auto discharge. We're gonna wait till the battery screen comes up. Yeah, it's at 59%. So while we're working for like another two minutes, we're gonna let that charge. And that's gonna get them up to snuff, which is really nice. It's one of my favorite features about batteries is the smart batteries will auto balance and auto discharge unless you turn off the feature for auto discharge. That makes a huge improvement in chemistry safety because batteries that are charged too fast, discharge too fast, meaning you fly too long or you go too hard on the controls. And then of course, batteries that are charged really fast is the most dangerous spot for the chemistry. And that's what leads people to have issues like fires and stuff like that. So be super careful. And then the other thing is, of course, the blade spinning up. So we're gonna have to make sure that we get our throttle hold set up. Now with airplanes and helis, if in any doubt, take off your rotors. And uh, in this case, this being a bind and fly, it's probably a pretty trustworthy aircraft, but we're still gonna be in a position where, you know, we review these RC planes in here. So I can get away with, if I would have a helicopter like run into the cabinets, my wife probably won't murder me. I mean, she might try, but I'll run away until she gets worn out and then I'll come back and eat dinner. <laughs> but uh, you may not survive. So you'll wanna be super careful how you do that. Um, obviously this is not a small, this is, this is enough that it could hurt you. So just be careful when you're setting it up. And we're gonna talk about throttle hold as we go through the process before we bind and we'll make sure that that's all established. 
Okay, so we should be done with the controls and the installation of parts so we can put away the screwdriver. So that's one of the reasons why I love blade helis is you're gonna have a huge leg up on setup compared to kit helicopters or even speed build helicopters because the 550, what is it? Mm -hmm. 550 something or a speed build, uh, short or long, or I can't remember which direction it is. I don't know, if we ever do it sometime, we can tell you more quick about build. it. Quick the build, quick build, The quick build, <laughs> quick, yeah. Heli people have different definitions of quick yes. than I do. So. I think putting the landing gear on this was pretty quick and that was still pretty slow for us. <laughs> All right, so what I'm gonna do is we have to set up our bind and fly profile now. And so that's what we're gonna do now. And when I say a bind and fly profile, what I mean is we need to actually set up. So we're gonna make the bind and fly profile by starting with our NX10 here. So we have to, we have to, turn this on and I don't know if we have a model that's an early release, so we'll, we'll let it power up. Yep, I'm gonna hit cancel and back and add new model. And so when you hit cancel and back, it brings you to uh, the model memory and we're gonna create a heli. And so this should be all set here. The NX and DX setup is right here. So they actually have step-by-step -step setup. And so if I cancel and back, add new model, and then I'm gonna scroll to heli, which I believe is what we need to do, but I'm trying to read this instruction manual here. So if you guys have IX, you're over here, we're NX. So I'm just gonna create an uh, uh, heli, okay? Which is different than an acro, so just be aware. Yeah, so you have to select a helicopter model. Okay, and then once it's done creating, now ours have, we have a ton of models in here, so we're getting close to actually running out of model memory. And so yours will not take anywhere near that long. Ours does, okay? So we're gonna put in a name. Okay, so we'll be back after we type it in. All right, so we have the Eclipse 360 Heli in here. We'll just sit back. All right, so now we need to set everything up. And so as we go through this, it's gonna tell us how to do it. It looks like there's a total of 29 steps, okay? We're gonna make sure that things go right, but with helis, I mean, normally in an airplane, the setup is, is very small. I don't know, did the camera crew give you a shot like this? Mm -hmm. You already did? Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way through the entire setup. If you have questions or if you need to see something slower, pause the video, look for the gear in the lower, it should be on like your lower right-hand side over here. Once you see the gear, there'll be a playback speed and you can go faster or slower and you shouldn't lose audio. So if you go faster, then you can go through some of the more tedious stuff and you can go slower if you need help. But just keep in mind with helis, I'm not super fast anyway because I don't always know all the settings for helis. And so I have to work through in a less intuitive way than I would say setting up this micro Draco or other planes we've done recently, okay? Because we do lots of planes, we do a lot less helis. All right, so anyway, so then I, I gotta try to put it over here, I guess, because I can't quite read so we'll over that. So step six next for F mode. Scroll down to the F mode. All right, so we're gonna go to F mode. All right, set switch one, or sweat, set switch one, switch B, that's where already you have it. So switch B is up here. It's already set by default. And then switch two. The hold switch, it needs to be set to switch H, so you just exercise the switch. And I want hold to be on when it's in the one position, so when it's back toward me. How do you tell? Because it says one right there, and then it says H. So zero is back, one is forward. Okay, so that's hold. See how it says hold, then it says normal, flight mode one, flight mode two, okay? So holds on. All right, so once that's done, then we can scroll up to list, up to list, and you can highlight it or you can just hit back, but I'm gonna hit list like they said, okay? Then scroll down to channel assign. Okay, so we'll scroll to channel assign, channel input config, scroll down to the channel input, okay, channel five. F mode, 
Okay, so instead of D, we're gonna set that to F mode, which is all the way to the left. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. Did you see it? It should be the first one. Yeah, it's the first one, light mode. Okay, so channel five geared of F mode and then scroll up to list and press the scroll wheel or just hit back. Goodness gracious. We haven't seen this type of instructions for a helicopter or any airplane. It's a little bit different than what we're used to, so it's taking us a little extra effort. Sorry, guys. So then we're gonna go main menu so we can just hit cancel. Okay, so it's giving us a warning in the wrong position because this is already on hold and we're in normal mode. And throttle, you see throttle position, we want that down low. God, that's so annoying. Okay, so you have to change it out of throttle hold which is incorrect, I don't want that on. So I'm gonna scroll back down to system setup, disconnect RF, I'm gonna go back to flight mode. Yeah, that's definitely correct. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to model or warnings. I want the warning here or here and here, okay? So now I'll walk back out. Now I have it on and it allows it to start. Okay. Let me shut this off. Okay, so when it's off, okay, from off, if I have throttle hold off, I'm in uh, idle up one or, you know, flight mode one or flight mode two, and the throttle stick is up, which is totally the dangerous condition. We're gonna start this, it's gonna give me three warnings. Before it boots the helicopter and turns on the RF, it's gonna make me clear those three conditions. This is why I show you this so you understand. So throttle is no longer high. I'm in normal mode and throttle holds on. Good, we want that, that's correct. So why they don't explain that in this wordy description, I don't know exactly. All right, so then as I go down the list, scroll down the rates and expo, God. Okay, so click, scroll down to servo. Whoops, rates and expo. <sighs> this is going to be really hard for me to follow along going back and forth like this. So scroll down to channel, select aileron. Why don't they just say aileron and tell you what to put? F to zero. Okay, so 100 with 25, 25, and then 75. Okay, so we're going to make our assignment here to switch F. Then it's gonna be 100 with 25% expo. And then it's 100 with 25% expo. This is a slight deviation from the way I normally set things up. And then this is gonna be 25% expo and we're gonna drop rates down uh, to 75%. How are we doing on the glare? We're good right now. Okay. All right, so that's normal mode. I, mean, I, I don't understand why they're the same, but I guess that's what they have set. Like, why is there not a middle step? I don't understand. We're using a three position switch. We only got high, low. <sighs> okay, whatever. You could set it to three different positions if you wanted. You could set three different values. So like you could, you could have this like at 25 and you could have this at like 30 and then it would give you less sensitivity. And then you could have this add something even more, but they're just doing 25% expo through the whole range and then just dropping rates, okay? So normally I would have like five, 10, and 20, so I have like a halving effect. And then I drop the rates down to 90, but I'm not used to doing helicopters, so I always follow the direct commands from the manual because I do have good experience with that on these blade helis, okay? So I'm just gonna set it as per the instructions this time and rudder, they set the expo up to 45. Okay. On Just on the rudder. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's just more on that. Okay, so 45, and then 45, and then this one's gonna be 45 and drop the rates down to 75. Whoops. So basically what that's gonna do for us is this. This will be our normal, we'll start in the middle. If we need less sensitive, we'll go here. If we need the same, we'll go here, <laughs> okay? So I'm actually gonna take and cut this down 
to 35. So I have a little bit less sensitivity in that top mode. And I'm gonna go to like 15. And then I'm gonna go to 15. You guys see how that keeps it in the same top position? So now I've got three modes. So I have less sensitive, I have a little bit more insensitive, a little bit softer sticks, and then even softer sticks, right? So I'll start in the middle. If I need a little bit more touchy, I can do a little more touchy. If I want a little bit less touchy, I can do less touchy, okay? So I like it that way. Sorry, Blade, we're changing that. Okay, good. So now we can hit back and we can go down to the next section, which is scroll down to throttle curve and press the scroll wheel. Okay, so. So we're trying to go to throttle curve. Hey, um, throttle curve. All right, so the normal is gonna be 50, 63, 75, 90. Okay, so under normal, I want step two to be 50. I want step three to be 63, 75, and then 90. Okay. And they don't say anything about Expo, so I'm assuming that's off. Okay. So that's the normal curve for throttle. This is, you need to make sure you get your throttle curve. I wish I was bold. Mm -hmm. Throttle curve should be bold. Okay. And so you got to set the end box for this. Make sure your pitch and throttle curves are straight, guys. Be very careful about that. That can cause a dangerous condition if you're not right. Okay, so now in number one, looks like they want 90, 90, 90, 90. So that would be like on idle up. That's basically gonna put the motor to spinning at like normal, full normal rotation, okay? Okay. And anybody who's set up a helicopter will eventually kind of get a little bit more familiar with this. I have set up a number of helicopters and this is just a little bit more output than what I'm used to seeing. And it's probably because, you know, being in a bind and fly setup, it's maybe um, they're trying to squeeze as much life out of it. Okay, so we're gonna go, this is again, just throttle, not pitch, okay? So we're going to 100%, good lordy lord. And I gotta say, even though I'm a little bit weirded out by this like approach, like it's very wordy, it's good. The only thing I wish I would have seen different is the bold on like the highlighted information. Mm -hmm. So like throttle curve should be bold here. End box should be bold. One should be bold. You know, it's just, it, it would be easier to read as we're going through. And to be honest with you, Horizon is really responsive to stuff like that. So, okay, so there's N, 050, 63, 75, 90. That's what we have. Then it goes to 90, 90, 90 across the board and 100 across the board. And then the H box is zero across the board. Now, why is that so critical? Because you can see that little dot indicates where we are, okay? We're not in any of the modes because holds on. Holds off, now we're in one of the modes. Okay, got it, throttle holds on, okay? Now, throttle hold is not the same as throttle cut. Throttle cut only stops the motor from working. Throttle hold dictates pitch positions too, okay? So just be aware of it. It matters because if you need to auto gyro a helicopter, meaning you have to shut off your motor, you don't wanna like stop the motor. Excuse me, if you want to stop throttle from working, you don't necessarily wanna like arrest the rotor because A, you probably couldn't do it. You, you would have to have like some significant braking and I don't, you'd probably burn up your battery is what would happen and then B, you need to be able to auto gyro, okay? So once you auto gyro, you can land, okay? Hypothetically. All right, so now we're gonna do, I gotta try it this way, hon, because I can't quite fit. Let's go to pitch curve now. Pitch curve is the next one. Okay, we'll just go back to that, I guess. So it's 30, 40, 50, 70, and 100 on normal. Okay, so at, at the bottom of the stick, you're gonna be at 30, which will give you some negative. That'll help hold you to the ground. So anything below here, the pitch is down. Anything above here, the pitch is up, okay? So you'll actually be pulling it to the ground at the zero position, right? So, all right, then we wanna to go to 40. Here on Brian Phillips RC, we like to try to teach you how to use this, one of your most expensive tools in your tool bag. 
And so please forgive us when we run into some of these uh, difficulties with our misunderstandings of things. So 25, 50, 75. So these are just linear output curves. As per defaults, if you look right here, you can see the same is true here. And then basically it looks like the H box. We are gonna set on the H box. This is only the pitch. We wanna make this look like our normal, okay? So this is gonna be 30, so we can auto gyro down if we turn on throttle hold, okay? It's so like in the event of an accident, you could, you could turn this on as the helicopter is coming toward the ground, okay? In normal? I think you're point two. Right now I've been set all the way 39 instead of 40, I don't know if it matters. Thank you, no, it does, I want it correct. But yeah, good point. Okay, so now hold is gonna be just like normal, mm -hmm. okay? So the thing that's kind of cool about these throttle and pitch curves, guys, is that every helicopter is going to be a little bit different in terms of its power and its performance based on the pitch of the collective, which is all of them together, and then the cyclic, which is, you know, like lean forward, lean to the right, lean to the left, lean back. And that's, of course, what, what changes the disc. And that, in turn, moves the helicopter and then of course the rotor itself, in this case has a brushless motor that spins this fan. That is going to, first of all, counter the rotation, the torque of the actual main rotor. So it's gonna keep the tail in position. It's gonna work with respect to that counter rotational force that's necessary to keep the helicopter from spinning in a circle. And it's also going to adjust your yaw. So you still have pitch, roll, and yaw, just like on an airplane, you know, like this Draco. Uh, the, the Micro Draco, which is awesome, by the way. You still have go up, go down. And I'm just going to walk out of the menu here. You still have up and down, elevator up, elevator down. Okay? So elevator up, helicopter is going to go, it's going to lean back towards you. Elevator down, the helicopter is going to lead away from you. This is actually the cyclic, and then this would be the collective. That moves them all together and this just moves one of them together. Okay, what's well, actually a pair of them going, you know, it depends on how the collective is set up. But basically you want to lean this, what this becomes like a disc, okay? So that disc, imagine this was just like a giant plate or a plane. When you lean it forward, it pulls the thing that direction, just like it was a big propeller, ow. And if you lean it back, it's gonna pull you that way. And if you, if you lean it to the right, it's gonna to go toward the right. It's, if you lean to the left, it's gonna to go to the left. And there is technically a little bit more to it than that because there's like a shift offset on what direction it actually pulls down. Don't overthink it. It's, that's basically what happens, okay? Then if you move all of the controls up, it's gonna go up. That's called a collective because they all go up. If you pull just this one down, it's gonna go that way. If you pull just this one down, it's gonna pull it this way, and so on and so forth, okay? So we'll be able to see this mechanism work on the swash plate here. That's the swash plate bounces that stuff out. And since this is a fly bar list, there used to be a fly bar that was out here too, which is kind of like a little counterweight, and it was also like a little, um, like a little fin. And that fin would sort of like set the basis by which the comparison would happen. So we have a different fly barless control that's just like this. And you can see like when they all go up together, that's called a collective. And then when they lean forward, that's the disc output that we're expecting. That's the disc output we're expecting and so on and so forth. And you can see the blades reflect what's happening and it changes position based on where it is in the rotation, okay? So, but just from the layman's perspective, if you're like me, and you don't like get into all the intricacies of the helicopters like you would with airplanes. It's the same basic flight controls here. You've got go faster and then you've got slow down, except it's not the same because you're, you're actually controlling this both pitch and throttle for the motor. So you're controlling how fast it's spinning and you're controlling the difference in pitch. That's the collective does that. You can actually pull it down, and that's how you fly upside down with a helicopter, okay? And if you're neutral, if you've got the sticks, throttle cuts on, throttle holds on. If you've got this line lined up right there, you're at 
That means these things are level. So there's, there's no lift being created, except there is in this case, because you need enough to keep the thing airborne, right? And that's why on the throttle and pitch curve at three, which is about 50%, you're close to 50 and three, you're at 63. So it takes about 63% of the throttle to keep the thing airborne, okay, roughly, all right? And that's gonna be different for each, whether it's a stick and boom like one of these or it's a super highly detailed futuristic helicopter like this or an Apache or a Cobra or something like that. But then also speaking of the three axis of control, so sticks down now just to be in the safe condition, we can roll just like we would on an airplane. We roll, okay? And then we can yaw, which is gonna change this axis of control. So if I, if I wanna coordinate a turn, then I would roll the plane, so this is like the plane. I would roll it, then I would put it into an elevator, and then that would make my nose go up like this, so then we coordinate it so it stays level with the horizon, okay? You can do the same thing in a helicopter, and all you're gonna be doing and I'm just gonna try to put this, I haven't put this canopy on yet, so I'm not 100% sure how this works. We're getting super close to being done with the radio setup, so please, I hope I'm not boring you guys. Okay, so that goes on there. Okay, so imagine you're flying this thing along. You can lean it forward, fly forward, apply rudder, and it's gonna turn like this, so it's gonna go like that. But really, the better thing to do would be to fly forward, roll, and lean the tail, and then you have a coordinated return, a turn, just like you would on an airplane, okay? So if you don't often coordinate your turns, okay, you're flying along, you roll the plane, then you dial in both elevator and rudder at the same time to make a coordinated turn, and you'd be flying in this path like this, okay? So you can do the same thing you can do on your helicopter, and it's the same, same thing. It's just that the timing is a little bit different in execution. And so that's why I'm really, I feel like I'm grasping at straws sometimes when I'm trying to explain this to people. But when you fly a helicopter or you fly an airplane, you've got the same primary flight control surfaces. It's just that the mechanical aspect is quite different. But the flight characteristics are quite similar in terms of the pilot and the way you pilot them. Now, the difference is, because you have a collective on this and you don't just have a prop that's tugging you along or a prop that's pushing you along or an EDF that's blowing the air out the back and making you go that way, the difference is you can take this thing and you can stop and then you can go backward and then you can go forward or you can flip it and then you can push thrust down and arrest your inertia and go backward uphill and lean forward and lean backward and flip over and do crazy crap like this, which I still am trying to figure out how the heck people do it because I haven't done those things yet. Now, I don't know if this thing will do hard, hardcore 3D like TikToks and all that stuff, but I'm just telling you right now, get ready to be amazed because you're going to think it's a UFO. And if you, don't, if you haven't ever seen anybody do 3D heli flying, just remember to bring your nut cup and a hard hat and a face shield. Mm -hmm. But I mean, airplanes like, hey, airplane, airplane. You don't have to say like duck unless it's right. pointed right at you, right? Right. Well, the difference is, which by the way, the scale is impeccable on this. That I didn't even think about that, but yeah, these things are super, cool. super close. Yeah. That is like so cool. Because this would be about right for the scale size of the helicopter. So the helicopter's going this way. Do you have to duck? Yes. Yes. Because you have no freaking glue. Ah, like yeah. that. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why we go through this and we talk about these educational things here on Brian Phillips RC because we love airplanes and you guys already know that, but I, st I love helicopters too. And I think sometimes people think, oh, well, you're an airplane guy, you can't do helis. Well, that's not true. I did helis before I did airplanes. Yeah. I love airplanes and I have learned that I really, really love airplanes as I've gotten more deep in it. But as I've started to kind of make the transition into both, I really like helicopters too. Now, you're not gonna see me doing 3D stuff. I might flip it over and do like a loop or something like that. That's about the most I do, okay? If I get upside down, next thing you know, I'm flipping out of, um, you know, these 
stunt one, stunt two modes, and I'm going straight back to normal, which is gonna have safe attached, which we're gonna talk about here in a minute. Okay, so getting back to the point. Sorry guys, squirreled. All right, so we've got the pitch curve set up. That's the next big thing. We're gonna go back into the function list, scroll down to mixing, Mix one, set to normal. Select the first uh, inhibit for master and select the I switch. You can't just exercise the switch here, you have to scroll it in. Okay, so this is gonna be the panic recovery. Select the second inhibit for slave. So this is the master and the slave, okay? So that's gonna be the gear channel. Can't exercise that, you have to scroll that in too. So gear. And then set the first rate to zero and the second to minus 100, okay? So this is basically gonna set our gyro output, which is a channel of control on a helicopter, and set the offset to plus 100. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look down here to gear, okay? So watch the gear. When I press that, it goes to 150, okay? All right? So scroll up to the list. Okay, so just hit back, goodness gracious. All right, so then we have to scroll down to timer. All right, so we have countdown, five minutes, throttle out inhibit, so they want it to just be running when you're over 25%. Okay, so then I'm gonna scroll over here. I'm gonna go to next. I'm gonna go to one minute I want. You know, honestly on a heli, I'm just thinking voice maybe. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. 20 seconds, at 10 seconds I want a voice countdown at expiration. I want tone and vibrate with a tone every minute thereafter. But keep in mind, guys, I usually do one out. That means anything over uh, anything over 25%, it's gonna start the timer, it's just gonna run the duration of the timer, regardless of the condition of the throttle afterward. Remember, with a helicopter, you're gonna tend to take off, be flying under close to full load until you're out of power anyway. But if you land, then you're not really doing anything, okay? You're stopped. So the one out doesn't make as much sense here. Whereas with an airplane, you might be up in the air. Let's say you take off with a micro Draco. I just kind of want to play with this tonight, evidently. So you take off, what's gonna be happening? This is spinning, right? Where's the most power being consumed? That thing in terms of re resistance and load, okay? So you're gonna actually have electrical load, you're flying along. So you shut off the, the motor and you're gliding, right? Well, man, you saved so much power, right? Hardly, it's a rounding error, okay? Because really the power that's consumed in flight is on takeoff, prop hangs, and landing. Well, except only because we do thrust reverse on the big ones, but that one doesn't have thrust reverse. Mm. I did want thrust reverse, but still it's an awesome plane. I love that plane. And by the way, I love the big one too. Anybody who doesn't love the Draco, it's because you're jello. The Draco's awesome. All right, so anyway, getting back to the point, you can leave your comments and arguments about the Draco down below, please. We will talk about it later. Okay, so scroll to main menu and we're already done. So see smart telemetry section for information on telemetry setup. So there is some telemetry setup potentially. Okay, so this is where we're gonna do the binding and everything. So we have to get the battery installed. So this is the part where you wanna be a little bit careful, guys. If you're not sure that you have it 100% set up right, if you, if you miss anything else, this is the biggest thing. You wanna make sure you scroll over to monitor, throttle hold is on, throttle is stuck at the bottom, okay? No matter what this condition is, still, still. Now watch what happens when I shut off throttle quick. Full throttle, booyah, chop your hands off, everybody dies, don't do that. Now it goes to 90, then it goes to nothing. And then it's just if your stick is up, okay? So I'm showing you that because that is the number one safety feature on a helicopter. You need to have throttle hold set up on helicopters. We talk about throttle cut on airplanes all the time and I don't wanna see pictures of people cutting themselves up because there's two safety issues in our hobby right now. It's basically props, rotors, and then batteries, okay? 
So it's, well, I mean, two, it's like the same thing. Okay, the primary flight power is gonna come from something. If you, if you get hurt on an EDF, it's your own problem, okay? Because you, you were working on it, all right? Because it's in a hole. But I mean, like on this one, that might be an exception to that because it's so shallow. You could still stick your finger in there or something else you don't want to stick in there. Don't stick it in if you don't want it chopped off. I'm just saying. I don't know from experience, thank God. Uh, but there are some unfortunate person that probably has done that. So please be careful, guys. This hobby is a relatively safe hobby. We have a pretty good reputation, except for the occasional idiot that tries to film like 747s landing. Don't do that. Respect airspaces, you know, fall rules and stuff like that. But just mostly the biggest, the biggest thing is, is don't interfere with manned aircraft ever. No matter what's going on, even if you have a low right of way or you're in a FRIA or you're flying in an AMA sanctioned field or a, an FCTA uh, sanctioned flight site, it, it doesn't matter where you're flying. If you see a manned aircraft, get out of the way because there are times that they fly manned aircraft into RC events. I have watched it happen. And that's awesome and super cool. And I mean, seriously, I love that stuff. But just remember, there's a human in there and Nobody cares about your model if it comes to people's safety, okay? Don't crash a full-scale airplane. You wanna talk about losing privileges, and even though I don't think it should be, and it's a whole nother rant, I'm not gonna do it here, let's not be the reason that somebody loses privileges by just, and if you're gonna fly without permission and break rules, fine, just do it and be safe when you're doing it, okay? Because I'm not any authority in RC at all, any more than you or me, we are the same, okay? We're under the, the thumb of the government at all times. So if you want the thumb to get heavier, then just do stupid things, okay? Please be careful. Don't get hurt, don't hurt other people. Do the right thing and stuff like that. Okay, nanny mode is shut down for the rest of the video. All right, so, oh look, here's the drawings. That's pretty cool. Look, we were just talking about this earlier. Well, that's kind of fancy. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to put a bubble level on there. I'm not gonna do that. What is that? Oh, you can take that off. Holy crap, you can take the whole thing out. That's pretty cool. Okay, I mean, uh, obviously you can take it out. I get excited about small things, guys. Ooh, guys, look, read about your bowl links. Mm. If you wanna read about your bowls, right there. Bowl links, okay? You can also read about cleaning, cleaning your bowls. Them. Links. It's important. Oh, look, swash plate. Oh, yeah, there's the flight controller, guys. It's the FC 6250HX. And then the uh, remote receiver. And this talks about the different settings. Oh, entering a trim flight. Okay, so you can enter the trim flight by doing sticks like that. Guys, someday I'm going to have to do a trim flight. I, I like literally have never done it and I need to learn how to do it. It sounds to me like you just take off and kind of hover the thing and then like eventually like stuff happens and things work. It's a super detailed explanation. That's pretty much what it says in the manual too. So maybe sometime I should try it. <laughs> um, okay, so getting back to the point folks, um, I'm excited to get this thing bound. So that's the next move. I think my batteries are done. I could hear them beeping here in the background. Oh yeah. So that's one of the reasons why I love smart packs is because A, you get the added safety factor. And if you don't know anything about these smart batteries, basically it's a three cell pack. So there's three cells that are in series. And you're like, but where's the balance lead? Where's the balance lead like on this non-smart battery? This is like an obscure battery. It's unmarked, unmarked illegal battery. I don't, I don't know what this is. Um, so this is also a three cell battery because you've got a ground and you've got one cell. Then you have another cell right here. And then you have another cell that's right here. And then those cells are taken out in series on these two outside lines, which are in parallel to the discharge lead here, okay? So that plugs into the aircraft. It's probably from a helicopter. Probably. No, it's from a helicopter. I'm just trying to remember which helicopter. I can't remember offhand. No but either way, uh, you don't have a balance lead and you're like, well, how do you charge the thing safely? We inject juice into here. And then we have a data line here that's plugged in between those two pins or sockets or whatever you, it's actually pin sockets. So it's like male, female, ambiguous. Uh, it goes into here and then there's a, a data pin in the center 
And as you can see, like on this one that's still plugged in, you can see we charged, uh, we put 796 milliamp hours into the pack and uh, it's trying to, it's currently balancing itself, not, not through the charger necessarily, but the actual smart chip is right here. And so if you ever touch your battery, this is a Gen 2, so there isn't a balance lead. Here's an example of a Gen 1. Here's a Gen 1, so it has a you know, balance lead on it. So you can still charge that with a dumb charger or you could use a smart charger. Well, if you use this style, you have to use a smart charger if you wanna be as safe as possible. There may be other ways to do it, but I'm not gonna talk about it in this video and cause you to burn your house down. Uh, by the way, please, any of this stuff you do, do it at your own risk. I'm not a lawyer. Don't make me get one. Our advice is good, but you have to do your own research beyond what you see in this video if you have questions about stuff that are either legal or safety related, okay? Uh, CO2 fire extinguishers be good to have around this. Ask me how I know, because I've never burned my house down yet. We do have fire extinguishers in three select locations and we have exit routes away from this giant fire hazard, okay? This is a little unusual amount of batteries to have in one spot, just to be clear. All right, so getting back to the point, this is a main discharge lead. The data transmission goes through this to a little serial circuit in there, and it uses this as the common, and this is the transmit and ground, okay? So that's pretty cool. Then this has, inside of here, there's a chip, and I could show you one, because I've killed these batteries before by crashing planes and other stupid things but this has all the wires that would go to the balance lead and it does its own battery management and it will automatically discharge based on a setting that's in this setup here, watch this. So if I wanted to change the setup, I can click this. Oh, I think it tried to start. So I can click and I can go to smart battery settings and then I can see, oh, I have it set to auto discharge at 240 hours. Now I could click and I could scroll this down, 72 is the default. I could turn it off. I don't wanna turn it off. I'm gonna put it back to 240. Now 240 is about the worst thing you can do. This pack will be more likely to puff than if I had one set to 10 hours, okay? So like if I had, I was at the flying field and I had six of these batteries charged and I only got five of them spent and then there's the sixth one and then I just put my spent ones in my like 50 cal ammo can that's gonna help give me some fire protection, boom, boom, boom. I've got six of them in there, I go home. The sixth one will eventually dissipate itself to just like a discharged pack. Now these are going to 3.9 volts. You can tell because that's a setting right here. Storage voltage, 3.9 volts. Why 3.9 and not 3.8 like a Gen 1? They must have figured out between Gen 1 and Gen 2 that they fall out of range quicker and then you have to jumpstart these batteries which we'll talk about in another video that's not a Horizon video. <laughs> just kidding guys. When I say jumpstarting these, if you have one cell that falls out of range, it's gonna think it's an unsafe condition. So there are some ways you can get those back. We're not gonna talk, talk about that right this second. This is set as a LiPo and it's gonna charge as such, meaning it's gonna be treated as though it is a LiPo. And when you plug this in, it's gonna go ahead and start charging to whatever the settings are. So if you charge this at the maximum charge rate, which is uh, where does it say here? This one says max charge rate 5C or 11 amps. So how do you figure out 11 amps? Take 2.2 amps, that's milli, so one thousandth of an amp, hours, milliamp hours. That's a, a, a time over power, okay? So it's time and power. So power has a function of time in the equation, okay? So it's not just current. It's current consumed over time. That's why it's milliamp hours. And it's not milliamp, it's milliamp. Spell it once, okay? So 2.2 amps, 2.2 amps times five is? 11. 11. 11, okay? So if you were to whip out another battery, you might see max charge rate 3C or 21 amps, 21 amps! What's three times seven? 21. Okay. So, but Brian, I'm so confused. You just said 5C and that says 30C. What the heck are you talking about? 30C is a marketing gimmick. 5C is a charge rate, max charge rate. 30C is a max discharge thing. It's like an arbitrary value. It doesn't mean 30 times the value. I used to think of this as like 30 compared to 50, 
50 better, 30 worse. 75, awesome. 100, crazy. More than that, you're just being lied to, okay? Now, that being said, we have 50C pack. Here's a 50C pack. Okay, so 50, see? But look at that, the max charge rate is on that battery. Let's undo this. The max charge rate on that one is 5C or 25 amps. How did you get 25? Five times five is 25, right? So you guys getting the point here? So the charge rate or the C rating is not the same as the C rating because that would be confusing. C for confusing. Did you guys catch that? It's both the only now, not to be sense. confused with the fact that these are 3S packs, not because there's three cells, that would be confusing. C cells, confusing. 3S series. There's a C in series. Are you confused yet? That's why you watch Brian Phillips RC, so we can confuse the heck out of you right before we explain how to do things. Did I cover that good? Okay. So we're gonna pull this thing off. Guys, if you're watching Brian Phillips RC and you like what we do here, there's two things you can do to help. Smash the like button right now, click the bell for notifications when subscribing so you can get all the new content, which is usually coming out two to six times per week. We've been doing that for a few years. We're up to almost 10 now. And we have thousands of videos right now. If you wanna to go to brianphillipsrc.com, you can find similar by type aircraft or by brand, manufacturer, distributor, hobby shop, local company that sells some random weed whacker. We have it all sorted that direction and we have it sorted by type. So like general aviation, this is probably a general aviation be a heli, okay? You know, the, the timber, SWS, beautiful. Beautiful, huge, two meters of wood. Right there, look. What, why are you laughing? Two meters of wood. Over here, we've got the uh, Cherokee 1.2, 1.3 rather. Beautiful, huge, amazing, general aviation. Or we've got, uh, you know, the T28, Warbird, okay? So that'd be a two meter Carbon Z T28. You can find exactly what you're looking for and you can find it right now because it's already up. And we have like literally thousands of videos for you to watch right this second. You don't have to wait for the next new release, but you can if you want. But I would watch some of that in the meantime and use it to make a decision against the new stuff, okay? Hopefully it's not all discontinued when you watch because that does happen too and that's frustrating, but it's part of life, okay? So whenever we do a radio setup, unbox build radio setup like you're watching now, we try to go into great detail and also teach you how to use the equipment. Now, admittedly on helis, there are times when I don't have as much skills to pay the bills as I would with like an airplane because I'm like used to doing it. It's very normal for me. Helicopters are a little bit more of a stretch for me. So after you're done deciding, you know, if our video brought you value, there's another couple things you could do to help support us. If you want to support us financially, we already have YouTube members. We have YouTube super thanks, which are like one-time donations. We don't even want you to do those things. What we want you to do is also, we have Patreon, monthly support, and then we have people that send us money on PayPal, which is crazy. We don't want you to do any of those four things. What we really want you to do is we want you to buy awesome stuff like this helicopter or that Draco or whatever it is. You know, it doesn't matter which one, just you name it, the, the S7F. Whoops, sorry, guys. Um, the Cachendo Evo, the SR71. Okay, four out of five is pretty good. If you buy those things, you're in the air, you're flying, you're loving it, you're not just watching me do it. And that's what we're trying to do on Brian Phillips RC. We're not just say, hey, live vicariously through Brian Phillips RC. That's not what we want. We wanna teach you guys to get the most out of these things. And then also to rule out like, say this thing is terrible and it's just garbage, right? Which I'm not saying it is, because we haven't flown it, I have no idea. It could be. Maybe it's the best thing since sliced bread. I really don't know yet, because we are filming this and you may be watching it out of order, you probably started with the flight and then you came back and watched the unbox, which you're watching now. But at the end of the day, that's how we bring value and that's where we ask for value back. We don't even really ask you to do those four things. If you wanna sub, sub, you know, uh, subscribe to Patreon and do monthly support, great, congratulations. Thank you for doing that, by the way. We appreciate you guys. But at the same time, we would rather you just buy like amazing planes and then live the dream. Let them pay our bill. It's even better, right? Okay, all right, end of rant. We're getting ready to bind. Guys, I gotta admit, there's one thing that we haven't done yet. Dang it. What did we not do, camera crew? What did we not do? What did we not do? Tell them. It's what our did favorite we not trick. Do? Oh. trick of the day. 
shelf liner. Shelf liner. Now we did get Velcro from the sack. Oh. We're gonna use this? some. We, we're gonna use some that we already had though, hon. Okay. Okay. Something I saved from another product. Great. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, why don't you just put Velcro on there? Stop being such a weirdo, Brian. Sorry, I'm not gonna stop being a weirdo, obviously. And then secondly, okay, so this is what shelf liner looks when it's like half gone. You can get a roll like this for like 10 bucks, okay? If 10 bucks is out of your budget, wrong copy. But the truth is, this stuff is awesome. It works really good, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna take a battery. Whoa! Don't do that to your batteries. Jeez. What I was gonna do is I was gonna show you, see how that slides, slips and slides? Now, I'm not doing that to aggressively damage my battery. I did not mean to drop it. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna show you this. You see how hard I'm pushing on that? That thing ain't moving, okay? This stuff is just gonna act as like a resistive thing in the middle that's gonna not slide. It's not slide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, ah, make it roughly the size of the battery, might as well, or roughly the size of the Velcro. So we're gonna undo these. These are actually really nice straps. I like these blade straps. Okay, so you see where the strap is? I'm gonna probably just, I'll just kind of cut it roughly the size because I've already got this kind of cut here. Okay, and then what are we gonna do? We're gonna take a little Velcro, just whatever we got in here. It's like sticky backed. That would probably be fine. But I feel like I could use like a thinner piece. And so we're just gonna find something in our bag of tricks here. Now, like I said, to be clear, there's some that came in that blade kit. So if you don't have a bunch to use up from other models, then you might not be like me. I just want to find one that meshes up really nicely. I feel like this, this one's probably the right one. So I'm just going to cut that lengthwise. Boom, like that. And then all I have to do is just take this stuff. And you can buy your own hook and loop or Velcro, whatever you want to call it. I'm not worried about Velcro coming after us, are we? I don't think so. Please don't sue us, Velcro. Trademark. Probably have better things to do. Well, you would think that, but you know, what if they sold like extra Velcro and they were pissed that they sold it to hobby people? I mean, Velcro usually is better than hook and loop. Is it really? Yeah. You mean then the Chinese knockoff? Yeah. I don't know. Some of that hook and loop we get from Horizon is pretty amazing. Okay, so you see what I did? It's just rocket science-y. Now you can stick that right there. Look at that. Amazing. Now I don't have to have Velcro covering up my 5C so I can use that rant later. You remember the 5C? What does C mean again? It means either Confusing. marketing gimmick, quality of pack. Now, it's not all marketing. There are some differences between 30C packs, 50C packs, 70C packs, 100C packs, and there are variations in between and below 30C. It used to be that you could get like 10C packs and fly on airplanes. 20C packs, 15C, 25C, 35C, 40C. It's, there's a bunch of them. All it is is like they're trying to distinguish between a pack that's of lesser quality and a pack that's of higher quality. Sometimes they'll put aluminum dividers between the cells. Sometimes they use a thicker heat shrink. Um, they use a better heat shrink. Sometimes they have better, higher quality charge and discharge circuits like Gen 1, Gen 2. Gen 2 technically has a slightly faster discharge rate as I understand it or balancing rate, which can you know attribute to slightly better um, resistance to sag in flight. I don't know. I'm not sure if I buy that, but the truth is I like Gen 1, I like Gen 2. I haven't had problems with either one, okay? But just remember, C ratings will confuse you if you're not careful. Okay, so I just dropped that in there, boom, like this. This is, this is 3S battery. So 3S means three cells in series. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that kind of tight. And then once, it, ooh, see how it wrapped around the edge? I don't like when that happens. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this back through a little bit. And so that it goes down to the side of the battery. Why do I care? Because if you go on a sharp edge like that, then you can actually damage the pack. Because I pull these, ah, oh, see it did it again, dang it. So I'm gonna just pull that a little bit. It's usually the first time I gotta figure it out. See how long that strap is, guys? Yeah, it's, really long. it's because you can put a bigger battery in here, okay? So we're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do this. Now, if you're gonna be on the edge, I would suggest go up on top with that, okay? But don't do it right on the edge because you'll dent your pack. These are soft packs. And the difference between a soft pack and a hard pack is like a hard pack would be used for like a car or maybe a boat. And a hard pack looks like this, guys. It's got a plastic case around it. It's not gonna be as weight sensitive. Like this is a 5,000 
two ass. And see, it's got plastic. So it's gonna be a little bit more resilient to damage and it's gonna hold up to more rigor, uh, rigorous use. And it's also gonna have that hard side helps to, you know, sort of fend off some of the ballooning that can happen um, when the packs get a little bit puffed. But that doesn't stop them from chemically reacting. So we'll be right back. So in this case, we're gonna be using obviously soft batteries, which is what we use in helicopters and airplanes usually. Um, so as you can see, these straps were a little bit long like we talked about. We've got our little, um, you know, we've got this shelf liner under there. And then this is the serial, or not the serial, but the satellite receiver that hooks up to the flight controller, okay? So we're ready to bind, which is coming up like pretty much right now. I wanna take and just kind of protect myself as much as possible without totally disassembling this thing. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna literally just take this, okay? And I'm gonna lay this here. Okay, oh look at that. To enter the telemetry values, you can do that. Okay, interesting. We'll look at that here in a minute, but I just want it off the counter, okay? So on this menu, I was in monitor to make sure my throttle hold is on and it's working. So we're gonna leave this down. We're gonna make sure that we're in flight mode normal and throttle hold is on. Now you can shut this off and then press and hold this button while powering it on but that's a pretty slow process right now. So I'm gonna scroll down to bind and then I'm just gonna plug this in. So I'm gonna plug this in. Oh, cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna press this button. It's gonna go into bind mode and as expected, it timed out. Bind. bind. Okay, so th throttle holds on. It's auto configuring. That sounded cool, all the beeping. Mm -hmm. It's like futuristic. Okay, so you can see things moving, so that's always good. If in doubt, move the stick a little bit. Throttle hold is on. You can see the pitch of the blades change. Okay, now, I'm just gonna, this'll, this will not go into speed because I have my hold on. Okay, so it didn't move and it didn't move. Okay, good, so I can now trust this because even if I turn this off with the stick down, there's no movement. Now it's back on, okay? Move the stick, everything is working. And also at this point now, we can see the awesome LEDs, which is super, super cool. And I just wanna show you guys this too real quick. Okay, so remember what we were talking about? Leans back, leans forward. You can see the collective or the cyclic there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Roll to the left, roll to the right. And then now that I know this is safe, I'm gonna put my hands down just to be safe. I'm gonna move this up. That's the collective, moving all of them up and all of them down together, okay? Pretty cool. And if you need to make an, an adjustment mechanically, you can pop off this ball link and then you can unscrew either this side or that side, okay? On either side, okay? But very cool. Now let's talk about putting this lid on real quick. So obviously we gotta put this lid on to make room. And so I'm just gonna see how this all fits. Looks like it does fit pretty good right here, but that body does deflect a little bit under the pressure of the cable. So I wanna try to kind of just re-situate this just a little teeny bit. And we'll learn how best to do that after doing this a couple of times. So this slides in there. It's actually pretty easy to take on and off, which is a big gripe of mine with many helicopters. It can be kind of a pain to put the hood on or the canopy on, that looks so sweet. Oh, I'm super excited to see this thing fly. That is really bright light, by the They're way. really bright. And I love the LEDs, guys. Forward facing LEDs, it's gonna help light up the body and the tail boom light, that is so cool. Okay, so now let's talk about telemetry because obviously there is telemetry that needs to be configured too. It should have auto configured most of what it needs to get. Okay, so. If we just kind of continue through this menu, we're done binding. You can see the different flash states. Okay. Smart throttle. The ESC in the helicopter paired with a flight controller uh, enables the use of smart technology. It can provide a variety of real-time power system related telemetry data while you fly, including motor RPM current data, blah, 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 blah. 
During the bind binding, your transmitter will perform an auto configuration which will populate the telemetry page. You also need to change the telemetry values to suit this aircraft to your needs and your needs. To enter the telemetry values for IX series, you must save on each page. Okay, so let me just go down to telemetry. Power on your transmitter, hold the throttle, hold, okay, set the throttle hold on, power on the aircraft, allow it to initialize. Go to function list, model select, select telemetry menu option. What? That's where you are now. Okay, go to battery, smart battery option. Start up, uh, start up bolts. Yeah, I, I don't give a crap about that. That's gonna warn you if you plug in a discharge battery, okay? Overcharge, I definitely don't care about that. And imbalance, I definitely don't care about that. Okay, you guys might. Okay. So you can scroll down, blah. Then I wanna go to the smart ESC. We already have it set to three cells. Low voltage alarm at 3.2. Hmm, strange. Okay, that seems pretty low. And set that to voice. Okay, where's the poles? There we go, there's your poles, eight. And then the ratio is nine to 64. I've never set this up. Mm -mm. To one, okay. And then return to the main screen. Voice, four amps. Okay, so we're fine there. Now watch this. Clear the timer, scroll over. Now we can see the receiver pack voltage. There's our ESC min maxes. There's our battery, super nice, one of my favorite screens. And then this is how you enter the smart ESC, which we're not gonna do that because we don't need to change settings. If you did, you'd have to do this within so many seconds of power cycle. And you would go low throttle, up elevator, left aileron, and then it would eventually say step two and you would probably do right aileron um, and up elevator. So it'd be like stick down into the left and then down into the right. And they do change that once in a while a little bit. Then it enters and everything gets controlled by this stick. So if you need to change your settings. Okay, so now let's talk about safe revolutionary safe sensor assisted flight envelope it's basically auto leveling okay so now we need to go into forward programming more or less to turn that on uh how do we do that stability they call it safe stability on i hate that word stability needs to be taken out of that nomenclature it's confusing because safe it's safe stabilization is stabilization stability is confusing okay so it's ambiguous and it's middle ground that like nobody seems to speak that. Okay, so in order to set up, I'm gonna just put this over here just in case something sparks to life and we don't expect it. So I'm gonna go to safe, stability, okay. So you can see my throttle holds on and stability is off, okay. Well, I would actually want it on and hold, wouldn't I? Not necessarily, not necessarily, because if you're auto gyroing, you might need to like get somewhere in a hurry. So my only concern is if I turn this off, it shouldn't start. So I'm gonna test it. See, it's already on. Now watch what happens. I'm just gonna do this quick because it'll have to spool up. See, it didn't start spinning. Stunt one, it's off and stunt two, it's off. Okay, now I'm quickly back to normal. Throttle holds back on, okay? So did you see that? Mm -hmm. Were you pointing? Okay. Yes. I don't like to do that because I feel vulnerable. Forward yeah. programming should force you to lock the throttle, um, whether it's a heli or an airplane, okay? So that's already on. That's good by default. Really mm -hmm. nice. So throttle hold is already set up. We set that up earlier. Panic recovery. If you get into distress while flying in any mode, activate the panic function and move the control sticks to their neutral position. Safe technology will immediately return the aircraft to an upright level attitude. Attitude, If the aircraft is at a significant height with no obstructions in its path, 
return the collective to 50% and deactivate the panic recovery to return to current flight mode. Okay, so pressing that. So I don't wanna do it while I'm in here. So there's panic, so the setup is already set. So it looks like envelope and yaw, okay? So what is gonna happen is you actually reduce your envelope when you go into a panic mode. So like, let's say you normally have like on auto leveling, you're allowed so many degrees up and so many degrees down on your roll and your pitch axis. So it's, it's kind of like more of like a cone on a helicopter, all right? As opposed to an airplane where it's just based on roll or pitch or yaw is not really taken into consideration on this. Okay, so on this, there is yaw, but it's the amount of yaw, the amplitude of change. So what's gonna happen is when you panic, it's gonna be like safe, except even more safe. And it's like auto leveling, but even tighter and faster. That's why we made that mix earlier. Okay, so it's gonna put the, the, the governor, if you wanna call it, or I, I shouldn't use that word, governor is a bad word because it means other things in heli world. It's gonna make the gain for the stabilizer higher when it's activated. And it's also gonna reduce the amount of envelope that you're allowed to fly with. So I'll show you right here, that's 30. And then yaw's 50. Okay, so if you go to stability, you can see it's 35 for gain and envelope is 45. So normally you have 45 degrees and then it goes down to 30 in panic. So you could change that in panic to be even higher or lower. So that panic would be even more like locked in, okay? We'll probably be showing that in our maiden flight because I'm not a heli pilot or I'm barely, I, I pretend to be one sometimes on YouTube. All right, so continuing on, now we've gotten to this page. We've already seen this before. This talks about, you know, how you fly it and stuff like that. And if you have to do a calibration procedure, then you can do this step here, which we're not gonna hopefully have to do that. We'll know after we try to fly it. So this plane, this helicopter, sorry guys, I do that all the time when we're filming heli since I say plane all the time because I'm so used to it. I do it when we're doing cars too because we just do so many videos on Brian Phillips RC. But this Eclipse 360, I gotta say, it looks totally cool. I'm like dying to see it fly now. And uh, with regard to the fit and finish, everything seems well done. Um, the foam color, being that it's silver like this, does kind of show the seams a little bit more than I'd like to see, um, but it's, it's manageable. It's not a big deal. This is foam, but underneath the foam, it's like carbon fiber. So like this thing is super stiff. Um, I'm a little bit concerned, like if you crash, you're gonna have some damage. It's gonna be kind of tough to touch up because of this cool silver color. But I gotta say, at least it's painted so it looks nice. Uh, if you don't like the landing gear, you can put on the skids. And I think the skids are gonna look really good too, but I like the extra height. Um, I feel like it gives me more room to tip before I hit the ground when I'm starting up. And I am super, super, super excited to see this thing fly. And just to be clear, if you've already got the, the Fusion 360, I just want you guys to get a size comparison here. Uh, of course, the Fusion 360 is sticking, but I'm bringing it over there, camera crew. Okay. So if you guys are un, unsure about whether or not you can handle this, the Fusion 360 or the 330 super similar in size for comparison, but just basic stick and boom, a little bit more light on its feet, and also a mechanical interconnection between the tail rotor um, and the main uh, rotor, which is a big deal for some people, and especially for aerobatic or acrobatic flying, okay? So also, I just want you to see the difference in, in blade size is virtually nil, okay? So it might be the exact size. I'm not 100% sure that that's exactly the same, but it looks pretty dang close to me, mm -hmm. yes. okay? Um, I would say the disc loading, which is like wing loading, except in a helicopter world, uh, is, it's got to be super. It's got to be super similar, but this is a little bit heavier aircraft, so it's going to probably be a little bit more actually easy to fly for guys like me that want scale flight performance, and a little bit harder with regard to 3D sort of things. Now, that's not to say that we won't be able to do 3D. It's just more a matter of it's probably gonna come with a little bit more effort and you're gonna have more limitations because truthfully on 3D helicopters, even the best brushless motor still takes time to spool up compared to a direct drive with regard to changing the pitch of a blade and then still having 
the same basic flight controller if you show them right there, okay? Now this one is also not a direct drive. It's got a, a geared drive. So I think it's like really similar. It may even be the same. Now I also just wanna point out one other thing. If you wanted to on this helicopter, look at the bottom. You see that? Mm -hmm. You have stick and boom points here, if you look, okay? So I'm not 100% certain that you can, but I, I would suspect that you probably can put skids on this if you decided you wanted to do skids. I'm not sure why you would do that. It might look kind of weird, um, but also I wanted to point out something. I noticed that this is a little bit loose on this one. This one seems a little bit too loose. So you want them to be able to break away, but you don't want them to just like fall all over themselves. And so if yours comes and it's like really loose, you might need to, to just make an adjustment. So I'm gonna just show you on this real quick. I think this is two millimeters. Nope, two and a half. So two and a half millimeters. So like that's just maybe a little bit too loose. So I'm gonna just torque this down just a little bit, like a quarter turn. Oh yeah, that's way better. I'm just gonna torque this down just like a tiny little bit. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then I'm just gonna bring that, yeah, this one's just a little bit tighter than this one, so I'm gonna just bring this up just a hair. And you saw, I barely any change. But I don't want those things whipping around. And then this one here, kind of the same thing. I wanna make sure they're not whipping around too much. Super easy adjustment. That's maybe an eighth of a turn, maybe an eighth of a turn. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm happy with that. So guys, with regard to my skill level as a, an RC pilot compared to maybe yours, I just wanna point out that we're not trying to hide you know, anything here. I know I'm not like the most skilled heli pilot in the world, and I don't pretend to be one. So, but the thing is a lot of people love helicopters and they're afraid to get into helicopters. And this is something I say every time we do a helicopter video, because the truth is, I love helicopters. I've always loved helicopters. They're a different flying experience. They definitely leave. Um, there's different challenges. There's different attributes of these things that you wanna be able to explore and enjoy. And I just like, honestly, I'm super excited to see this thing fly. I wasn't sure what to think. I knew it was supposed to be futuristic looking, but I think it's kind of sweet, especially and it's so weird, like we did not plan this out obviously. I didn't even know what this thing looked like before we opened it. But, but next to this, like if you just think about the scale of a person to this, it would be a, eh, this would probably be just like slightly bigger. Maybe instead of being 800 millimeters, it might be like 900 millimeters. But it's gotta be pretty dang close to this. And so I just think it's super cool. And uh, if you guys haven't considered this helicopter yet, you might wanna consider it now. I think it's gonna be super fun. And a lot of you guys, if you've got every other plane, okay, you might wanna try something new. And I'm just gonna tell you something. Not every helicopter is for everybody. And not every helicopter, you know, one of the reasons I love Blade Helis is, is you can get something like this, it's got GPS, and it'll pretty much fly itself, take off, land, do everything. You're just a spectator at that point. And I'm telling you, you're just a spectator. Now you can still fly it. It's also very expensive. It probably costs more than this. Uh, this one here, it's cheap. It flies reasonably good, but it's gonna take off. It's gonna fly at an angle and it's gonna wiggle and it's gonna drift all over the place. And you're still only kind of flying by suggestion. Okay, now you're still in control and that's cool. Same thing with this. Again, cheaper, different like experience. Fun, beautiful though. And I mean, when we start getting these, I'm gonna be like all over it because I love scale helicopters just like I love scale airplanes. I'm a sucker for them and I love the fact that I can store helicopters and I can have a lot of them, okay? The other thing that's cool is if we start getting a size class like this that's popular and they sell well, then what's gonna happen is there's gonna be even more that come out in the similar platform. So that's gonna have like a boom that goes in here and fills up some sort of like a foam body. And so I can't wait to see what's next. Um, I know you guys have already come up in your minds what you wanna see next, but I wanna hear it in the comments below. If you haven't already left a comment, leave a comment on what you wanna see next. I mean, I think it goes without saying in Apache, I wanna see a Cobra. I love Apache and Cobra. I want them on the same scale so we can fly them together. I want a Huey, okay? I want the MD500. Uh, what else? 
We want the Airbus models, which I don't know, just a few of them, whatever they are, because there's a number of different Airbus models. And then um, uh, the Bell, I want a Bell. Uh, what else do I want? And I mean, there's so many different variations. I want military and I want general aviation. And I'm gonna tell you, once I start getting more comfortable with 3D, I wanna be doing more 3D, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm like not dying to become some 3D pilot. I think the vast majority of pilots out there just want a helicopter that is gonna fly well enough that you can fly it without a heart attack every time. So I'm gonna tell you what, I can jump on a simulator and fly around a helicopter and have no problems and do just fine and can do tricks. I can do all the bells and whistles. But the thing is, then I go out in the real world and it's like, oh, all bets are off. Cause it's like the fear factor is palpable with helicopters. Not only from the aspect of, I don't wanna get whacked in the face, but from the aspect of, I don't want a seven or eight hour repair. Okay, and with, with airplanes, you can come in and scratch a wing on landing and no big deal, or you can come in and even like hit the building and break a wing and glue it back together and be in the air in 20 minutes, right? I mean, it may look like garbage, but it's still gonna fly, right? But a helicopter, you don't get that luxury. So I understand if you guys are in the same situation I am, which is you have enough skills to do it, but you're just reluctant to do it. I gotta say, take the leap, get into something. I don't know if this is the one for you. You guys gotta make that decision based on what we've got here in these videos. But I can tell you this, if you can fly that, that Fusion 360, you can fly this thing. And if you can fly this thing and you can fly the Fusion 360, you can fly the 330, you can fly the 230 S, they're both really good platforms to get in. I had the 230 fly away on me, go across the street, land in the trees. I went over, picked it up, crashed in the trees, picked it up, straightened the blades out, flew it home. I could not believe it. That doesn't usually happen, but I'm just telling you right now, there is something about the way that Blade does these things that's a little bit better than some of the competitive offerings. They may be better at 3D, but this thing's easier at survivability, in my experience. I'm not saying it's always gonna be that way. So anyway, uh, really excited to be bringing you this here on Brian Phillips RC, the Eclipse 360, all new from Blade. We hope you guys will check it out. If you do end up buying one, do us a huge favor, buy it from the links in the video description below. You can scroll down there. We'll link to the battery we used, which is a 3S 2200 30C Smart Pack Gen 2 in this case, but there'll be other choices that come up in that same size class if you wanna pick a different one that you'd like better. Um, they also recommend up to a 3200 3S, and it did look like the battery tray left plenty of room. There is good ventilation in here, which is very important on a heli because the batteries do get used. Also, the NX10 has been great. I think the NX10 is overkill for this. You could do it with less, but I'm gonna tell you the same thing I tell everybody, and I get this question almost every day. Mm -hmm. What transmitter, Brian? I'm just gonna answer this again for the 400th time. And I know you guys have just asked for maybe the first or second time. So I'm not trying to beat you over the head with that just because I've heard it 400 times. Maybe 5,000 times is more accurate. Get as much as you can afford and get it as soon as you know you're hooked, okay? And the NX7E is a great starting point. But if you know you're hooked, don't do it. Just get the 10, don't waste your time, okay? If you get the seven, or if you're like, hey, can I use the DXS? I had a question and, I'm, and the people are well-meaning when they ask these questions. So if you're the person that asks, I don't mean to beat you over the head with this. But the truth is the DXS is not meant to fly stuff like this. It's not meant to fly stuff like that. You could technically do some of the things that you wanna do with the DXS. Don't do it unless you are like in New Zealand and it costs you $14,000 to get one of these, okay? It's gonna be harder to set up, you don't want the headache, and you want a good experience. So I'm gonna just tell you this, if you get a ready to fly that comes with the DXS or a DXE, go for it, enjoy it with the ready to fly. As soon as you can get into this, bind that sucker up with that plane, and you will find that it's better flying. Why? Because you can tune the controls better, and we will teach you how to do it. Now with helis, I'm learning with you. With airplanes, I'll give you some tips and tricks that might be even a little bit different than what E-Flight or Horizon suggests, okay? Um, so hopefully we have answered the questions that you did have and the questions that we didn't answer, leave them in the comments below, we'll try our best. And a lot of times with helis, our crew, our subscribers, our viewers are so good to us in this regard. They will correct me immediately when I make a mistake 
but they'll also answer a lot of the questions in the comments below. So I know I'm just saying that tongue in cheek, guys. I don't mind. It, it's all part of it. We put ourselves out in the world. We're going to get scrutiny. That's just part of it. I don't mind looking like an idiot once in a while because the truth is I'm looking like an idiot actually doing it. And the key is just like you at home, if you want to avoid looking like an idiot for the rest of your life, you're probably going to avoid a lot of things that you could have done looking like an idiot for a few weeks or months while you learn to get good at it, good enough to fly. And then you won't look like an idiot anymore. Now me, I make, I take special exception at looking like an idiot for years. You might only take a few days or weeks, but when you start into a hobby like this, it is kind of hard to not feel like or look like an idiot for a few times. It's not like you're born knowing how to fly helicopters, okay? I know as guys growing up as kids playing with little toy helicopters and airplanes and stuff like that, we just assume we're gonna know how to do it. Or maybe you fly a full-scale helicopter and you've got you know the collective and the, and the stick and you know how to really do that in real life. Well, let me tell you something, this is a different skill. Same thing is true for airplanes. And anybody who flies RC could back me up on this. If you fly full scale and RC, there are some overlap in skills and knowledge and stuff like that, but they're not the same skill, okay? So just remember that when you're looking into this, just because you fly full scale Airbus helicopters, medevac helicopters and things like that, or you flew a, a Blackhawk or whatever. Oh yeah, put the Blackhawk on the list. I forgot that, sorry. Chinook, twin. Oh, that'd be so cool. But anyway, guys, if you agree with me, put it in the comments below. Let people know that I'm not totally full of crap because it does help once in a while when you guys back me up and fight the good fight for us in the comments because we do really, honestly, on Brian Phillips RC, we try really hard to give you good, solid information and that's why you get less with helis because I don't wanna tell you stuff I don't know and I'm still learning. So thanks for being so gracious with us as we do learn some of these new skills and get a little bit better with the skills that we do have. Uh, again, radio setup, that's why you're here, most of you. We got that done. Truth is, the blade manual takes you through almost step by step exactly what you need. We might tune it a little bit. We might go a little bit extra on Expo. I think we did one tiny variation. But beyond that, guys, just follow the manual. You're going to be 90%. If you can't read a manual like me and you make your wife do it and you listen to what she says, then you might like our videos. So that's why you're here right now. So thanks for being here. There is so much more literally right around the corner on Brian Phillips RC and we can't wait to bring you the next video. Whether it's latest and greatest or a second thought or a revisit or something just totally new. We love that you guys keep coming back and watching our footage and we love that you keep supporting us the way you do by either Patreon, PayPal, YouTube super thanks or YouTube members. Any of those ways are cool, but we still firmly believe, and we say this and reiterate it all the time, the only reason we did that, a YouTube begging site, that's what I call Patreon, is because people asked for like five years. And so we finally said yes. Now we have a group of people that support us on a monthly basis. We really appreciate it. It doesn't make or break us financially, but we do appreciate it, it's helpful. What does make or break us financially, I shouldn't say make or break us, but really helps, is buying these things. Because we sell a volume of helicopters, planes, transmitters, batteries, things like that. Because then that helps this little RC ecosystem we've got going on, where we want to review more stuff, and we want to bring you more quality content, long format content, no less. Well, if we don't ever sell anything, these manufacturers don't want to work with us. And if we bring to you and we just trash everything we do because it's not as perfect as we want, that's not what we do here. It's not the fastest, best, it's cheapest. We're not gonna lie to you and we're not gonna trash them. We're gonna tell you the truth and we're gonna try to put it in you know, some level of um, you know, reasonable consideration of the environment right now. So like the other competitive offerings, okay? That's what we try to do the best we can because we wanna give you guys no BS review, but also not just trash everything because it's not perfect, okay? Because let me tell you something, there's easier ways to make a buck than making helicopters. There's easier ways to make a buck than making airplanes like that. I'm gonna give you about a thousand of them, okay? So we want these companies to win while we win because what do we want? We want RC airplanes. We want RC airplanes, aircraft. We want helicopters, we want you know, VTOLs, we want quads, we want all this stuff, and it's a highly regulated, it's getting more regulated every day. And so we need these companies to not just say, screw it, and we're gonna start collecting trash to make money, or we're gonna do some more rental properties to make money. Because like I said, if you wanna make money, you can make money a million different ways. 
It doesn't have to be making sweet toys for adult children that like to complain about stuff, frankly. Because I'm one of you. <laughs> I am you. Uh, so let's reward the companies that are making cool stuff by buying stuff from the links and then you'll be rewarding Brian Phillips at the same time and our family of six that really puts in a lot of heart and soul to this. I love this stuff so I could do it, but my wife does it a lot and our kids put up with it a lot and it's kind of hard to explain that to people that don't live this life, but we do every day. And so we hope that you guys will put that into perspective with regard to whether or not you're gonna buy stuff from the link or just take an extra three seconds to do that. We do appreciate it. All right, guys, uh, that's all we got for you tonight. We really appreciate you being here with us. We have so much more content, like I said, right around the corner. It's in that office right there in a pile of boxes of amazing RC products brought to you first or maybe third or 15th from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. If you haven't already clicked the bell for notifications when subscribing, do that on the way out the door and smash the like button if you wouldn't mind. We appreciate you being here. Come back for more.